now for our weekly news segment. Unfortunately, Tony is not here this morning, uh, so I will be sharing the news. Let's do it. Let me bring up my screen share here. All right. What do we got? What do we got? All right. Um, so first first thing we got, um, this is just what you sent, Doug. Uh, Chainalysis, the Theranos of Blockchain Forensics. Evidence is mountain, mounting that Chainalysis of Blockchain Forensics heuristics may be more of a swindle than a science. Yeah, so we've been hearing this quite a bit from Arctic Mine. And this is, uh, it's kind of, catching catching wind in the bitcoin community and it's coming out of the uh, that case what it, what is the name of the i'm sorry the name of the case um i don't know if you scroll down in the article i forget the name of the the court uh, case. us versus uh sterling gold yes 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 so we've we've had uh tor, tor erklin they they spoke at Minerotopia. They're that was the a really good talk to listen to Yep, they're they're the firm that's that's fighting this case. That's um, uh, representing the defendant, who was allegedly running a Bitcoin mixer. And what's what's interesting about the case is basically on trial isn't just Sturganoff, but the but what's also on trial is chain analysis itself and determining whether or not it's actually viable and should and could be used for. Uh, tracing people's uh, transactions and then using in a court of law to basically find them guilty of, of certain crimes, right? So that that's really the most interesting aspect of this case, and not to belittle uh, the you know the defendant here, who uh, in according to Tor Erkland is you know is is certainly innocent. Um, but so somebody came out and wrote an article because I believe the the expert opinion was released. Which was done by, which I was surprised to learn. Maybe we could uh, actually do a whole Monero talk show on this now that it's developed more. Uh, but the expert opinion was done by what's the name of the Cipher Trace? It was uh, so a lot of us are familiar with Cipher Trace. They're actually owned by Visa. Cipher Trace is the chain analysis firm that's claimed to have been able to trace Monero transactions. <laughs> Um, but they were the expert that issued their opinion here and basically in their words uh, saying that you know chain analysis, the chain analysis that's that that's being done that was that was done in this case um, essentially shouldn't be trusted. Uh, so it's it's interesting. We're seeing developments there. It's what Arctic Mine has been saying all along. He was uh, uh, an expert witness in this case. Maybe we... I don't know if he's out there right now. If he is, he could jump on. He could give us uh, the yeah, best... Yeah, you could totally have um, like a dedicated Monero talk. Just we'll to have talk a dedicated to Monero talk, but we're, 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 this is something that's been developing now, and uh, Monero has been on the forefront of it, which is interesting, right? Because it's, it's, it's about Bitcoin chain analysis, but really it's like coming out of the Monero community um, where they really have a close eye on this and uh, we're, we're prosecuting chain analysis itself and determining whether or not it's viable and should be used in the court of law. So keep an eye well, on this. What I've that's seen people um, mention more and more is that, oh, I mean, like, you know, like with what Arctic Mine had been saying is that even with Bitcoin, it's like the, the software they're using, it's like it's already an issue for the fact that, um, you know, it's like, They've got this black box of uh, proprietary software they're using that has embedded that the government is using to charge people with that we don't even know if it's like it's good. But based on what Arctic Mine, a lot of people have been continually starting to say is that they can't even really uh, do this with Bitcoin that well. And like, of course, the claims of like Cypher Trace being able to trace Monero transactions, those are dubious. They have nothing to back it up. Uh, but even with Bitcoin, it's like they're even having trouble doing that reliably. So it just goes to show that like people shouldn't be getting charged based on these uh, companies using their uh, hidden software. There's a couple things that um, so I read the article maybe slightly differently than um, than y'all are describing it right now. 
the the way that I read it was that Cypher Trace was, as an expert witness, was criticizing the specific method that was used here to bring the case against Roman Sterling uh, Sterling off, uh -huh. and they were saying, listen, this particular method that y'all are using has a significant um, false positive rate and that it's like you, they shouldn't be using it. They haven't validated it. They can't prove that this model is actually good. Um, but then they mentioned some other models that they said, listen, this model is significantly better. Um, incorporating this data is, is also better. Um, and then uh, I think later on at the end of the article, there was something about saying, listen, this chain analysis can be used to um, like, as an, an investigatory lead, like, okay, here's, here's a place you can look, here's something that could exist. Um, again, it's, you know, in a lot of cases, it's probabilistic. In a lot of cases, it's not right. Like with the, um, I forget the guy's name, but the guy that lifted 50,000 silk, uh, 50,000 Bitcoins off Silk Road and kept his privacy for 10 years and then accidentally pwned himself with a change address for 0 0.07 Bitcoin chain analysis found him. And that was like very clear, right? That, that, that was him because that change address was associated with um, a known identity that he had on an exchange. So I, I think that it's what they're saying, like they're criticizing the specific um, algorithm that these guys used. And they're criticizing the fact that the government came and used this one thing, which was very unreliable um, to, to create the entire case and bring that as the primary evidence in the case. When they're saying, listen, it's more like it's an investigatory aid. You can use this to go find um, other evidence and then bring that evidence at trial. But I don't think that Cypher Trace would claim that um, chain right. analysis on Bitcoin is bunk. Yeah, I mean, that they're in the business of chain analysis. So that, that's why I was I was kind of surprised to see they're the expert witness. But they're, it's kind of like chain analysis company versus chain analysis company, right? So they're saying like, yeah, the, the, the methods you used suck, right? They're competing for those government dollars. Um, but in doing so, they've kind of debunked. They're starting to debunk chain analysis in general. Um, that that's that's what this article is alluding to. See, that's, I didn't read the article that way. I just I read it that they were debunk, debunking that one particular method that they're bringing <clears throat> that they brought to bear in court um, as the prosecution. Well, um, I mean, whereas, even the they title of the article is "Evidence is Mounting That Chain Analysis Blockchain Forensic Heuristics May Be More of a Swindle Than a Science." I mean, it's you know, it's Bitcoin That's Magazine, so obviously yeah. they're going to put some shill kind of title up there. But I mean, it, they right. talk about later on in that same article, they talk about a different technique that they say is reliable. Chain and uh, uh, Cipher Trace saying like this one has been validated. This model actually is really good and can tell you stuff. So article, I, I, I just I don't. I don't Article think it's clear cut to say chain analysis is good, like it works or it doesn't work. I think it's like kind of a, this nuanced topic. Totally agree, man. Totally agree. Uh, but there is there is a uh, a section of of people that are, are making this argument, right? That it's uh, pseudoscience, and Arctic Mine is 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 one of them. He he doesn't believe in you know he doesn't think he thinks these chain uh, chain analysis companies are basically doing voodoo science here um i think i th i personally fall on i don't know and I, I believe body i think that's essentially what you're saying on the side of that chain analysis works to a degree maybe some of these companies aren't doing it correctly uh but i certainly think it works uh especially like given that example you gave and i'm constantly talking to arctic about this and really trying to understand where he's coming from uh, but I'm still on the side of chain analysis works and, and and is being used to track and trace Bitcoin transactions and make it, um, you know, prone to surveillance. There's a really good metaphor for this where I don't know if you guys have ever had that friend who is so smart, he's too smart for his own good. And he'll sit there and explain to you why you can't do something while you're doing it and like finish successfully. Right. It's kind of an inversion of that where these people are saying because math, because math. But the reality is um, the, the, the real world application of people's ability to transact offline is already just like this massive hindrance to the range of efficacies that's possible. David, you need to go back to your chair. <laughs> I also uh, do wonder what do they use like. What kind of techniques might they have when they synthesize data from the NSA and ISPs and all that kind of stuff that they don't want to bring to court, right? Like it, this whole trial was kind of weird. And I remember I, I talked to with Tor for like almost an hour um, at Monerotopia 
Um, really smart guy, really cool guy. And uh, it was just so weird, like that they would continue bringing this case because it's almost to their own detriment to do it. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know. It's like this case is hurting their credibility significantly. You would think they wouldn't do it. Is hurting the credibility of of the prosecutor of the government of chain analysis, right? Of of all of it. Hmm. Okay. All of that credibility know, they have, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we need to we need to do another show on this. Maybe we get Tor back on, um, and maybe Arctic. That'd be great. Get an update on that. But it seems to be a developing concept of this attacking the uh you know attacking chain analysis and we'll, we'll see where it goes next we've got a post from Seth of privacy terrifying reality when a modern country can execute a man for simply speaking out against this country online yet another reminder use pseudonyms plus tor if you're in a in an oppressive regime to get the word out saudi man received death penalty for a post online latest case and ride ranging crackdown on dissent A Saudi court has sentenced a man to death over his post on X, formerly known as Twitter, and his activity on YouTube, the latest in a widening crackdown on dissent in the kingdom that has drawn international criticism. The judgment against Mohammed bin Nassar al-Ghamdi, seen Wednesday by the Associated Press, comes against the backdrop of doctoral student Salma al-Shahab and others facing decades-long prison sentences over their comments online. So it looks like this guy uh, has, um, I guess he's uh, he's made some posts that his um, his government doesn't like very much, and now uh, he's uh, he's gonna get charged for that. Um, and I'm trying, I'm not sure what the actual um, what the actual posts were. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But point is, uh, you know, we're seeing the worst of totalitarian governments taking advantage of social media. Let's not forget that oh, the petrodollar and uh, a lot of this uh, uh, The charges levied against al Ghadmi include betraying his religion and disturbing the security of society. It's a very uh, broad uh, <laughs> conspiring against the government and impugning the kingdom and the crown prince. <laughs> Uh, all for his activity online that involved resharing critics' posts. Uh, so maybe he wasn't even making these posts himself. So it says resharing critics' posts. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely uh, not very great. Yeah, you know, it it really obviously to just to bring it back to Monero since it's Monero talk, like. It just shows you how these uh, the financial systems that prop up these regimes. I mean, the petrodollar it's has given them so much power that they can just literally execute people to protect their egos for years to come. Um, and it all boils down to one group's ability to just print money and then, you know, pay soldiers to fight wars all around the world on behalf of saudi royalty and banking cartels and they like a lot of these problems just shrink to such a such a like on such a massive scale these problems would not exist if there was real sound money because the economic viability of murdering people for insulting you is not there oh yeah and i uh yeah this guy he's he's sentenced to death and i guess that's um that's an escal escalation of what they uh, had done previously, uh, which is lengthy prison sentences for people, which is already like, you know, not 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 a free country whatsoever. But now they're just straight up killing people, which is really uh, that's really um, it's pretty messed up. Um, and social media is making it easier for them to do so. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah. What's what's the next one? We'll, we'll keep moving through. I think we got yep. a bunch. Oh, from you. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, Elon that was... Musk, when will he integrate WorldCoin? Because uh, Elon Musk seems to be um, very obsessed with turning X into this everything app where just everything's built in. And as that happens, it's continually starting to get worse in terms of what they want to get from people in terms of data. 
Uh, and Elon, this from this Business Insider article, says Elon Musk's X, X will store users' biometric data and education history. Uh, and yeah, so Doug's like, when the world, world, world coin integration, it makes sense. <laughs> That's yeah, I basically... Know, what, what you about this. I mean, this is, uh, you know, we, we understand what he's trying to do. He's Yeah, he's trying to make it an everything app. And in his mind, he's, he you know, thinks everybody needs to be KYC'd, right? So then it can become this this banking app as well. Uh, he essentially wants to build, you know, a transactional system into into Twitter. But of uh, course, but, we all are going to know it's going to be some crappy uh, centralized fiat-based system or also added a just kind of crappy crypto, right? Like mm -hmm. maybe even a CBDC. Um, so and where everybody's mm -hmm. KYC'd. Yeah, now put the two stories together. A site that demands that you identify yourself and they want to add biometrics, and then a regime that kills you for what you say online. Like you put the two oh, together, yeah. it's oh, absolutely yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Like, exactly. uh, and yeah, and now they're starting to um there's some people in certain uh jurisdictions who have um needed to give X uh their their ID information, like a picture of their ID to have the uh, the blue check mark. Um, so if you want that Twitter uh, or X blue, whatever the heck they call it now, uh, subscription, then you're gonna have to eventually you're gonna have to like send them a picture of your ID like you do for like a financial institution, um, which is really not that's like just way over the line. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what I have the blue mark, right? It seems like I mean, obviously you use your because you have to use your credit card even to get it. Yeah, so it's already not an ideal thing. You're already being KYC. Um, there. You're already being KYC a little yeah. bit, but then they're going the extra mile. And like, hey, yeah, you got to do ID, uh, and yeah. they they do this under the whole guise of like you know making sure people are real. And yeah, bots on Twitter that's like a problem. There's like so many bots. Um, but like the solution isn't to just force KYC everyone and dox everyone with their ID. Uh, yeah, that will not. The be solution happening. is random X. <laughs> um not sure okay yeah <laughs> i guess the uh the font isn't liking this dude's characters his name is spannard um you can connect to this node through tail scale funnel and a socat at this address so um this is an example of somebody running android uh you uh or running a monero node on android using termux uh, termux is basically a terminal emulator you can run on android that's using, I think it's using ZSH because Android is Linux based. Uh, and so a lot of Linux applications do already uh, work on Android uh, to, to a degree. And there's a lot of terminal programs that you could run through Turbux. And uh, you're actually able to get uh, a Monero node running on Turbux on an Android phone. So you can run a full, well, probably not a full node, a prune node on your Android phone if you want to. I mean, if you have like a, Maybe like a 256 gig model, you might be able to run a full node. But yeah, and Crypto Grampy has a, uh, he's got a guide on how to do this uh, that was created um, a couple years ago, it looks like, but this would still probably apply today um, about what this is and how you set this up. So if you have an old Android phone sitting around and you want to be able to run a node, but you but you don't have like a dedicated computer to do that or Raspberry Pi, this is a valid option. And that's really cool. This is like the great purpose of Monero right here is taking old hardware um, that would normally just be, you know, thrown away or trashed and reusing that for something good, like helping the network. Very cool. Um, any comments on that? Probably nope. not. Um, good stuff. Next, we got from Softstack, uh, PyNode XMR. Uh, adding new features in 523.08. XMR to S swaps from Elizabeth and crew. Uh, update your Pi node uh, from the and then you update uh, atomic swaps from the setup menu to install a swap utility. And with Monero node running in sync, go to swap tab UI. Yep, just instructions on how to do this. Um, but yeah, it looks like uh, you can have uh, XMR to ETH atomic swaps built into Pi node XMR. Uh, which is really cool. Um, and PyNode XMR, it's it's like the um, it's like the Android Node program uh, where you can install this base image for a Raspberry Pi that has all these features that help you set up a node and run it, and gives you like a cool dashboard so you can see the data usage and how the Raspberry Pi is doing. It's pretty cool. It looks like they uh, they have built in a lot of tools, and one of those is a swap tool. And now you can do XMR to ETH atomic swaps. 
Very cool. Very cool. We, we, we might look into doing something like that for the Noto. Yeah. It's different things. It's another, another on off ramp. Right. And, and the thing is, is even if technically proficient people don't really understand how they can get out into cash, if you have several dozen people in every community that know how to do this, and then people who are just faster, better, cheaper, more efficient at the on and off ramp through swapping technologies and all of that, you'll you'll eliminate the uh, the friction when people think, well, what if I want to get back into fiat? As soon as they see that it's like a widely available service that a lot of enthusiasts of XMR would just do for free, or at least whatever it costs them to do the swap. And all of these tools make a really big difference in making that a feasible uh, endeavor. I had to switch over to share this once this is a video. Um, how much of this do you want me to play, Doug? I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's that long. Let's see. Six minutes. Oh, shit. <laughs> Breaking new aerosol COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. I'll, probably, I'll play the beginning of it. There's a new form of COVID-19 vaccine on the way, and it should alarm you because it's aerialized, which means they don't need your consent. This is from the nationalpulse.com, written by the raw egg nationalist, titled Researchers Create Aerialized COVID Vaccine. And you need to pay attention to this because this is important, and it may just save you from having unwanted mRNA inside of your bloodstream in the coming years. If you don't think they would cross the line of forcing vaccines on you, then you just haven't lived in the last three years. Wake up. Listen. All right. University researchers have created a new airborne method of delivery. Yeah, so I don't know how true that is, but, you know. I mean, it's not surprising. Kind of, it's like they, they wanted to force everyone it. to take it, so why wouldn't they uh, uh, force it on you without your consent, right? Um, Wasn't it in, like, 1963 that the Air Force did the exact same thing over a town in Washington, and it was an aerosolized vaccine? I love how they talk about, oh, just – just yesterday, these researchers, and it's just this tiny little bottle. And no, so none of this totally stuff is normal. new. They've like just you know like they've always done like all this stuff at some point before, and most people don't know about it. And you know, small <laughs> test areas and whatever. Yeah. Meanwhile, like seventy years ago, they were using planes over entire towns to do the same thing. I always wondered in the airplane, you know, when they like spray through the the air system like they'll sanitize it that way i've always wondered if they've been putting anything oh like the chemtrails I mean, it would be like no in no oh. just like internal to the cabin oh internal to the cabin oh, yeah oh, yeah cool. and it, yeah like they use every, some kind of system to sanitize the plane. I hear them say like we have an enclosed air system blah 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 when i'm on the plane like my tinfoil hat grows three sizes that day well, ideally, I'd all they would wear an N95 like a mask for filter once. and like a UV filter, but you know, maybe they're putting something else in there. Who knows? Yeah, this might be a reason to finally start wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> we will have we will have real masks, though, not like just the cloth diapers that sit on your face loosely. Uh, I have these, uh, the you know, the bottled air cans. I mean, I could go show somebody if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but. Um, it's like pilot's air designed for being on a plane. And it's literally the, the purpose of the can is to bring it on a plane. And it says it right on the can and it's like FAA certified and they still will never let me take it on and they'll never let me ship it over the air because they're like, Oh, can can means bad or something. It's, and it says right on the bottle, like how you can look up to make sure that it's FAA regulator certified. And what it's just air Wait, that's that's like a that's like from space balls yeah oh my god that, Wait, what'd you say it was canned air <laughs> alaska are you huffing on 100 percent o2 over there <laughs> <laughs> you know it bro <laughs> wow so we gotta sell those on xmr bazaar oh really cool that's yeah weird. they're the boost cans and then you can get them flavored oh i've seen that have... before yeah, and they're really great for the gym because one of the things that you can do if you're like super lazy and fat like me and you just want a shortcut is uh, you you raise the CO2 levels or the CO2 saturation in your bloodstream for when you're trying to gain and then you raise the oxygen levels when you're trying to cut and you can go back and forth like four, five, six times in the same day. Um, like, so for example, if you're about to try to hit the gains or you just like did like, 
a lot of reps. You can just keep holding your breath. And How much is a really single can cost? And then you switch to this when you want to go to burn. Um, yeah, that's that's what I call the slacker workout. So, <laughs> how much does how much does one can cost? Biohacking. I don't know. I don't shop anymore. I haven't shopped. It's, it's funny because it's like life. imagine it's like ten bucks and they're just selling you like air in a can. It's literally that. <laughs> <laughs> My wife just told me that they're like about fifteen dollars at Walgreens. Well, how many? How many? Uh, how many hits? You're selling those at Walgreens? Yeah, well, that's weird. Yes, Who's buying this thing other than it's you? Watch, you got... And it tastes like, well, this one tastes like peppermint. So, but that's you can so get them funny. without flavor. It's pretty you, awesome. You guys have all seen Spaceballs, I'm sure, right? Or, or, or are you guys too young? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And actually, Chinese people use this to launder money out of China right now. Um, what? They buy the Canadian air that they, they bottle air at like this park in Canada and they sell it to themselves. They start a company in, in Canada that sells the air and then they jack up the price and they send the bottles and then they sell it to themselves in China at a loss. And so they can move money over to another company. I'm like, I hate to give it away for any Chai comms listening. Sorry to cut out. What, what, is, what is like the sales pitch on the can as to why people should buy it? It's like, oh, these ones, or you mean the the Canada money laundering no, operation? No, like what's the actual <laughs> use of it One besides that you money have. laundering? Oh well, I mean, it's it's eighty percent oxygen. So it's it's the perfect amount for if you need higher oxygen levels in your bloodstream. So it's um, it, it. I mean, there's a lot of reasons you might want it. So another good example, like I I always have a huge stockpile of these because you know paranoid prepper, fat guy, conspiracy theorist, whatever. Um, but during COVID, a lot of people were having asphyxiation even to the point of death. But if you have these on you, not medical advice, just for the purposes of Monero talk, it's not medical advice, but I'm just saying, you know, in theory, if somebody wanted to, they could use it to supplement their oxygen levels. But then when it comes back down, your body like self-regulates. However, keeping the oxygen available if you're asphyxiating can be really useful, especially with covid 2.0 right around the corner um maybe might not be a bad idea to have one or two of these available in case your mom who's been a lifelong smoker gets covid just saying all right oh, always learning new things here on monerotopia next we've got this tweet from d martian i think the future of monero mining may move increasingly away from performance cpus to old low power devices there's no roi as people use spare hardware old phones and the cpus are designed for energy efficiency the best miner might come from pdus and os configurations uh yeah i mean everybody just take your old android phone everyone's got some old android phone right um just sitting in a drawer somewhere just grab that one or set two up a, set up a node yeah and you know i've got i've got a bunch of old pixels from the years so yeah I'll, I'll definitely be uh i'll be trying this myself um uh but um of course there's um both nodes and mining right so he's talking about mining here um uh, mining you can't you can do too um <laughs> but uh the performance probably won't be like very great whatsoever um but if a million people do this, you know, I mean, that'd be something. Um, I think running a node on a phone would probably be more worth it than trying to mine personally. But uh, yeah, you just take that old phone, take the old, or even an old computer. If you have an old computer, like an old laptop or something, you know, you could use that to mine. Very cool. Very cool. Last article. Um, Warren. Oh, we told, yeah. Body already covered this. Oh, oh, yeah, you did. You talked about this. Yeah. Yep, blah 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 recession. recession. Hey, Body, could you elaborate like you were saying before how you wanted to speculate on uh where was it? Um the Binance withdraws and the mining because the, the those two star stories back to back. You know what I'm talking about? Because I'm really curious. 